On today's episode of The Hustling Agent, we have George Lawton from the Lawton team out in Phoenix, Arizona. George has the number one team in the whole state of Arizona. They do about 3,600 transactions per year, six offices, 175 agents, and he knows how to scale a business. I've learned a lot from George since I've known him. I hope you do too. Check it out. All right, folks, today sitting here with my buddy, George Lawton from the Lawton team in Arizona. George, what is going on, my man? What's up, Sydney, man? Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for much having me. Dude. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, so, you know, we were kind of talking off air and um, when we record these, at least for me in California, I'm on lockdown. You're in the beautiful state of Arizona where gyms are open, pools are open, everything sounds great. Um, what? What have you been seeing in the market? Has it been consistent pretty much this, in, this entire time? Um, we saw, so initially we saw a little pickup in inventory, but supply here in Phoenix has been so constrained for the last, you know, shoot, few years. Um, even with that influx, um, we're still about, what well, we what I would say is about 55% of the inventory that we'd need for a balanced market. Um, demand slumped slightly, but we already found the bottom of that, like, you know, new properties under contract, showings and all of that, watching those lead indicators, or it's starting to climb out of there. So it was like a fast drop off and now it's kind of slowly climbing back out of it. So it's cool to see. Yeah, man. I just always think about your market there in Phoenix, in the greater Phoenix area. And I was just, it seems like it's always just so hot out there. I mean, not heat, right? But the heat, market heat, itself both. is It's both, man. <laughs> yeah. It's hot and it's a, it's a frenzy, right? Um, I can tell you like, man, what we've learned. So really one of the coolest things that has happened over the last few weeks is I've never seen my agents more willing to adapt to change, more willing to try out things virtually, getting comfortable with video, right? Yeah. Getting out there, being present. The cool thing too is like, sometimes the agents are willing to adapt, but then the consumer isn't. But now the consumer is so stinking re willing to adapt too, man. Like we always say, go more virtual, do more videos, do this, do that, right? And they're like, the consumer may not be ready for it. Well, damn, dude, they're ready now, right? And that's what I, we've seen happen. So um, just to kind of give you uh, some numbers, like we did, you know, over 100 listing appointments last month. Um, of those, 70% were virtual. 70% wow. were virtual appointments. Of that too, we saw the capture rate of, so it was two signed agreement. Uh, right now, we're about 42%. Obviously, that'll go up from those appointments last month, but we're already at a 42% capture rate of those listings that we did virtually, right? So great. consumer adapting, our agents adapting is freaking awesome to see. Um, you know, one of the things we did learn from those listing appointments, though, where it used to be, you know, what are you going to do to market my home? What are the comps? It was all noise, like, before comps. Now it's, like, shift it. Number one is, what are you going to do to sell my home safely? Yes. Right? It's no longer, what are you going to do to sell my home? It's like, what are your safety protocols? What does that look like? So we prepared our agents with the collateral to say, this is what we do, not only to sell your home, but sell it safely, right? And arming them with those tools and those, you know, marketing pieces to be able to give to their clients. That's good. Yeah. Um, did you try and do any of those virtual listing appointments on your own? Dude, I haven't been on a list. <laughs> well, the, the, the reason I asked is because I tried. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And I totally got the listing. And then, and then the one guy said, well, Mom, you just come to my house and check it out. Oh, no, no, no. We can do it, you know, through the Zoom. He's oh no, I, I want you to come over. So yeah. I asked There's my wife. Yeah. yeah. I asked my wife and she said, no. So I gave it to one of my agents. Now it's going to sell like it's going to wrap up tomorrow. But I think you're absolutely right. Like the safety portion has come through, uh, and your agents were pretty tech enabled before, anyways, right? Yes, I mean we had all of the tools, um, but the adoption wasn't there across the board. You know, the top producers leaned into it pretty hard. Um, whether it was Bomb Bomb, really understanding Boomtown campaigns, understanding like Zoom, even right. I mean, we're we're a G Suite company, so all of our stuff's Google Hangouts, but the consumer understands Zoom, um, they understand FaceTime. And what I've told them is like, you know, you have to do 
whatever your client's comfortable with. So you have to learn all these technologies. And if they don't have a preference, then you can push it one way. But most people are, you know, first and foremost, start with FaceTime. Pretty much everybody knows FaceTime, right? right? And then from there, like Zoom is the buzz, right? So people are learning and understanding Zoom. Uh, my six-year-old knows Zoom now, you know? So get that, understand it. And then from there, if you know, if you could control it a little bit, then I would move it over to G Suite because that's where everything is housed in ours for like a Google Hangout. Okay, yeah. And I learned I, I I'm a Google Google Suite uh, person now too. Yep, Thanks yep. to you, my friend. So yeah, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> perfect. Good. And I've been curious about using Hangouts instead, but uh, I think you nailed it. Everyone's using. It. Yeah, we're. I mean, you know, you're in so many different ones. Like, you know, even with the stuff we have with Zillow, Blue Jeans, you know, like you all different ones making sure they're updated you just have to be able to know how to run it and um you know make sure that you can connect your mic and have the video on right exactly <laughs> um so being that you guys have come out of this where do you see the consumer going right now is it you think it's back to normal like that or you think it's going to be a gradual thing i think we have um several quarters to return to normal right like um i don't know if the cool thing is what has changed it's probably good change um what we've seen um more virtual um you know consumer willing to to do those meetings things that would take windshield time of a couple hours a day Uh, we can eliminate a lot of that right and that's leverage that's time back that you can do more meetings Because when I look at a successful day and when I tell my agents what makes a successful day, if you get up and you look at your calendar in the morning and there's no appointment set, not successful. But if 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 you have your day filled filled with appointments, guess what? You're successful. And this allows us more time to be able to um, reach out to the consumer, set more more appointments, get in front of more people, um, and in turn do more transactions. Right? It's leverage. Awesome. So as far as like the agents and the ISAs, how, how many ISAs do you guys have again? Um, so ISAs, we have four ISAs. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the total inside sales between um, buyer and seller. So we keep that separate. Uh, we have nine. Nine. So have you, have their prospecting activities changed at all? Yes. To so I guess internal sales prospecting has changed. Um, we are, but I don't know if this was more towards the event or just the shift that we needed to do in general, right? Oh, we've yeah. we've learned that live connection has such a better conversion. So remember, like pass off in this business is so no matter what, man, in any business, it's clunky. Yeah. Things happen, things slip through the cracks. I set an appointment for you. The agent, they haven't talked to the agent, they haven't met the agent if I'm inside sales. But what we've shifted to is more live connections. We know if we can get them live over to an agent that they're going to be face-to-face with at some point in the transaction or live Zoom with, right, at some (laughs) point in the transaction, um, then we're going to have a better conversion. It's proven, right? 70, like if we can go live connection, I can get 75% to, um, to appointment set appointment, whether it's a Zoom listing appointment or a live showing. Um, and from there, I can get uh, 75% actually show up for that call. And then we have a 12, 15% conversion rate on those when we have those things fall in place. Good. So, yeah, man, I mean, that's been brutal for me too. Pretty much all the all our teams that we know, right? The, yeah. the handoff just never works. But sounds no. like... You do a live transfer. What's so is a live transfer to a certain agent based on their calendar or to like a jump ball or no? So um, one thing that I, I've learned is jump balls are hard too um, because people like to hoard leads. Agents like to take all the connections and then they're full of these connections and then they don't convert maybe down the road, right? Um, and then you have other ones that are really they only want to answer when they're really, really prepared to answer. Right. So setting up a, and it's hard to plan your appointments when you don't know when they're coming in. Right. It's hard to plan your day when you don't know when they're coming in. Um, we have shifts. Uh, so 
you might have two shifts a week uh, and you're from this time to this time. And then we compete the shifts against each other and with like labels, we have red, blue and gray team, right? It's just like, boom, you know, another one set for a red, you know? Um, so that's the way we've done it. I found that giving the agents a schedule of when they're going to get calls and then having a target number for connections for them on a monthly basis um, allows them to plan better and be prepared for these calls. Good to know. So what is the average amount of connections? And so let's define that word. Yes. A connection is an ISA handoff. Co correct. I'm on the phone with a consumer that is either wants to see a property, talking about a property, has inquired about a property, um, or it's a seller that has come through our seller channels that now wants to explore the listing process, right? So a live connection can be a live connection for a buyer consult, for schedule a showing, or a seller that uh, like a listing appointment, listing presentation. Um, so when they're live on the call, we patch the agent in, we're transferring them at that point. And so that's when, that's when it's actually in the agent's wheelhouse. That's when it becomes part of their database is once they've been live connected with them. So, There's other leads though. Sometimes we can't, sometimes they're nurture leads, but what I'm really focusing on um, my agents converting is from that live connection point. So how many live connections do you want your average agent to get per month? Average capacity is 15 to 20 a month. Um, um, live people who want to do something. Live people that who want to do something. Um, now we watch that closely because we still expect a conversion rate down the line. You Once your built book of business is built up and you've had so many connections without conversion, then we, we slow you down, right? Let's make sure, let's figure out what we need to do to get some more people across the finish line. We go through, we dig into the database from the last couple months and say, you know, where, what are we missing here? Are we following up as consistently as we should be? What else do we need to do here to make sure that you're converting at the highest level? And this makes sense for you, right? Yeah. So is there like a max amount of prospect? Yeah. If you have a hundred connections, live connections, and you've only converted two of them, my goal is for you to be at 15. So I, if you had a hundred, I want you to have 15 closings out of that. Now, our company as a whole, so our top 10 uh, producers, converters, are over that 10, 11% range. But company as a whole converts live connections at 8%. And then so now for the ISAs. And, you know, we're kind of, I'm really, I'm really getting a lot out of this right now because you got me thinking hard about my own business and you always do that. So good. Um, <laughs> um, are the ISAs, what's like the rate of inbound lead to it being a connection? Um, so it depends on the source, as you know, man, like uh, e Facebook, um, yeah. PPC, <laughs> it's low, like a, a live contact uh, out of those. I mean, if I generate 300 PPC leads in a month, um, I'm lucky to have a conversation with 10% of those, sure. right? To, to get a contact with them. Um, Facebook, uh, it's the same. It's a little bit more incubation. What I like, uh, what we do on Facebook is we try to re-engage on the platform that they connected with us on. So to get to the point where you're actually on a phone call with them takes even longer. Um, really the aggregate sites, I mean, we have a great relationship, as you know, with Zillow. Um, those live connections come right through from them now so my ISAs are very limited involvement there but yeah. then there's nurture leads that we get as well too um their uh conversion from a nurture to a live contact is about 10 to 15 percent as well too good to know and then so the ISA if it's a nurture lead the ISA does all the nurturing until they are ready to talk to an agent yep yep I want my agents focused on they their business is from a live connection. That's what we're pushing everything towards. I don't want you worrying about, um, and I, I've said this a few times and I, I've got to change my terminology here, but like, I don't want them sorting through the sludge, right? Like I want you, I, I want to give you something that's going to convert now, you know, like at 10 to 15, I want it to convert 10, 15% because that's going to keep you engaged and excited about it. Right. That like, if I, if I say, I'm like, I'm going to give you a PPC lead, they convert it. 
less than 2%. They convert, you know, Facebook, it converts to 1%. You're like, yeah, I'm not, that doesn't wake me up in the morning. Sure. I mean, I'm going to get it to the point where you're going to close, you know, one, two out of every 10 phone call, every time you, 10 at times you answer the phone, right? That excites people. Um, and so that's, that's what I want to get all the lead sources to. So I don't want the team, I want inside sales focusing on it up to that point. And then it shifts to the agent. So the agent is responsible for nurturing the lead once they met, After the life. Head, et cetera. Yep. At live connection at any point in time though, they can be pulled back too. Right. Um, if it's not, if you're not meeting the laws of the pipeline um, and working it effectively, or sometimes the agent, you know, chooses to deselect and pull back a little bit. Um, and then we, the ISAs will go back in there, um, shuffle things around, reassign some leads if, it, if that's what needs to be done, um, or just aid the agent in nurturing too, like doing some of the follow-up, depending on where that. If you've got 10 people you're driving around in your car right now showing houses to, by all means, we're not going to pull anything from you. But that's why it's so hard. Like I call it um, like an availability ranking with our agents. It's like this big, long algorithm that I don't know how I would ever like um, make it automated because <laughs> it, it, the like life events are involved. How many people you have in your car you're showing to, right? What does homeschooling look like now, right? Like it's so many different things that um, that's why as a team leader and, and my team leaders, like they have to be so engaged with, with the agents and just making sure that we're serving them well as well. Wow, man, you are blowing my mind like always. Um, so what does the agent engagement look like between the agents and the team leads? Do they meet every uh, day? Flat? What? It, it's weekly, um, a weekly coaching one-on-one, -on -one, um, going over essentially that. Like we, we review the live connection calls. So we'll, we'll go over successes, challenges, um, what does it look like? Uh, you know, is there any coaching opportunities? What's your conversion look like? Let's talk it through to what's your life look like right now? Um, where can we help? Where do you need support? Um, and where do we think we can lift you up? Uh, so it is a weekly one. Uh, some of our top converters are on a biweekly coaching. Um, but as you're kind of staying ramped up, if you're not to the conversion levels that were, you know, that is our expectation and that we're shooting for, then, um, then we're going to make sure that we have at least a weekly coaching call. And then there's obviously team meetings, masterminding, group accountability, all of that. So robust, man. Everything you do is so big. I just love it, dude. I love it. Um, so your advice to other team leaders like me, like you're somebody that I admire and doing big things that I aspire to be like, Outside of even this COVID, right? Because we talked about this is going to be come out in a few weeks. Hopefully, we're all back to normal. Um, what's been your advice to other team leaders that you talked to? Um, well, there, there's been a, a few things, I think. Um, one, you have to over-communicate right now. Um, I'm trying to give our my team with as much market data as possible because that's what their clients want. Um, our clients are, you know, the consumer, they want news. They want to know what's going on. They're worried about their home values, right? So what can we do and, and not be Pollyanna-ish, right, in it? Like, I'm not overly optimistic. I'm giving you real data with real tracking. And so I try to arm my team with that where they don't have to go find that mark, it, that, that data, right? It's soft prospecting now. Um, you know, it's getting more where you can turn the sales mind back on, but nobody want to be sold to, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, right? Like, uh, but now we're getting back to that. So what we've done is we've started another appointment challenge, another contest. I always say when, you know, this is the, the Tom Ferry coaching in me. Uh, when business is good, run a contest. When business is down, run a contest. If it's winter, run a contest. Summer, run a contest, right? So we're running a contest right now. Um, the theme behind it is uh, a Tiger King theme. So it's called... A <laughs> Hashtag appointment king queen. Uh, so we have different prizes within that, but it's a fun like social media engagement. Get them engaged, man. Got to stay in front of the agents. Um, have some fun with it. Make it competitive and the culture will be there. Dude, that is such a good idea. The contest and the fun and Tiger King. Everyone loves Tiger King, right? Man? Yeah. Well, yeah it's, 
it's it's exciting it's it's funny right and then we did like so it's uh the top prize is obviously the person that sets the most appointments um we just track that with a hashtag and within boomtown um there has to be good qualified notes from the appointment in there um it's tracked by my director of lead generation um and then we do um the gold digger award which is the oldest lead that is converted so we also have a team pool of leads um so Agents have their own database, um, but we have this pool account that agents can pull from. If you pull one out from four years ago, you have the opportunity to win the Gold Digger Award if you get it to uh, appointment. Um, and then we do we did a little social media game with it. So hashtagging things with Appointment King, the one that gets the most likes and the most comments on it, um, is the winner of that prize. So That is awesome. What a good idea. I, I didn't know that you could do those. Uh, I mean, I don't have Boom Down, so I shouldn't know. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, well, how about... Just like you, what have you been working on in the business going forward? So for me, I think it's, it is a, a, like a communication tour, if you will, well, like just making sure that we are communicating um, as much as possible and getting out there and checking on people, see how they feel, see what they're doing, make sure that they're moving the business forward and we're staying in productivity and not staying in drama, right? Like shut the news off. Don't watch any of that stuff. I mean, Stay informed, but but for me, I'm like I'm I'm turning off CNN. I don't watch the local news now. Um, I'll check on market data on my own. So for me, like what I'm doing is, it always was this, but it was more business stats um, on how our business is performing. With but now I'm looking at market stats every morning, um, MLS stats, um, showing time. It really has a great page now uh, to see the showing activity in your market. Um, I'm looking at, uh, interest rates every day, right? Like I'm tracking MLS, all those things. First 30 minutes of the day, I'm getting a temperature on the market. So I don't have any blind spots come three months from now. Good. Dude, so, I mean, you know, real quick then three months from now, what do you see happening? Man, I feel, I see a lot of pent up demand. Um, it's a slow uh, recovery out of this. Uh, but you know, Phoenix in particular, Arizona market in particular, um, is in such a, just a sweet spot to be able to come out of this strong. Um, we don't, I don't have the crystal ball and what all, you know, some of the things that, you know, inflation and, um, you know, the mortgage industry and, and things like there, there's things that are going to change. That's one thing that we've always learned is, this market, this industry, it's always changing and you got to adapt and figure out what you need to do to put your team and your agents in the best spot to be successful. And uh, that's why we continue. And that's our job, man. To me, like we've, we've got to make sure that we stay in front of it. I don't think you're going to see this big, at least Phoenix market, some of the other states, like you're not going to see this big flood of REO again. Um, but is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. And by gosh, I may have to dust off all my old Fannie Mae contacts, but that's that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do, right? Yeah. Dude, good point. Um, you know, yesterday the governor here in Cali said he's going to give a ten percent pay cut to the state workers. Right? I live in Sacramento. This is where the capital is. A bunch of people are going to make less money. Dang it! A bunch of money. <laughs> Bunch of our buyers, so I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen there. Um, real yeah, quick. that's interesting. It's funny the impact on that. It's a good. Uh, it sounds like a good idea, but then there's also impact across the board on it. Well, yeah, I mean, so that they were saying on the news that the firefighters who work up in the hills during the summer, when we have all the issues with the forest fires, they all got a pay cut, and they're not going to yeah. be real super um, excited about that. There and risk their lives all summer. Yeah. It's not like they make a, a ton of hazard pay. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, any final thoughts, George? Ooh. Um, you know, I was trying to think if I can leave you guys with a good note here. Um, you know, I guess, you know, most importantly, uh, it's stuff we've covered so far, but mindset, man. Mindset is so stinking huge in this. Um, staying positive, shutting off the negative, um, you know, being aware, but don't sit there and worry, like stay productive, 
Um, there's so much, you know, if you stay in motion, a lot of things can, you know, this is not going to drag you down. So I think that's the biggest thing um, that I've tried to uncover with my agents and with my leaders is that, you know, we have a business to propel forward um, and we don't take excuses on why it's not growing and, and uh, why we're not producing and, uh, and hitting our goals. Good to know, man. Well, thank you for the time. People have a deal to send to you in Phoenix. How do they reach you? Um, you know, the best way, honestly, I, I would love to hear from people. Um, I'm pretty uh, easy to get a hold of. So shoot me an email, george at lawtonteam.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram uh, at George Lawton. Um, I'm not super engaged on there, but email's best, man. Shoot me an email. I love referrals. Oh, yeah. And I think I've sent you a couple and you guys have crushed them. So yeah, I appreciate that. We sent a few your way, man. And uh, you guys always do a good job for us. So I really appreciate it, man. Cool, George. Thanks again, bro. No sweat, buddy. That conversation with George could have gone forever. I always learn so much from him. I hope you really got something out of this episode. Share it with a friend. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. And we'll see you next time on The Hustling Agent.